now this, though. We've got a, a new gruesome video. We cannot air, uh, air it for you, but it actually uh, shows ISIS fighters killing at least 25 Syrian government soldiers in the historic town of Palmyra. Uh, we've got former U.S. Army Special Forces Officer Jim Hansen with us now. And, Jim, uh, with the most violent uh, things happening overseas, it does feel like the United States is safer. I mean, can we get complacent, or are there things that we still should be doing? Charles, I don't think there's any reason to be complacent. Thankfully, and thanks to law enforcement and everyone who helped us through a 4th of July weekend with no attacks here in the United States, but ISIS has called for attacks throughout Ramadan and said its followers and, and Muslims worldwide are 10 times more required to kill infidels. So they're still at it, and until we take them out, we are vulnerable. Jim, you, you're talking about taking them out, and I think everyone's uh, resigned to the fact that this administration simply is not going to do that. You know, we'll have, a, you know, I heard all of this uh, uh, hubba, you know, over the weekend, uh, these major strikes in Syria against ISIS, and it was the biggest so far. And then they said we killed nine of them. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. So how are we going to, we're not going to take them out. So if that's the case, the threat continues to increase, right? The threat continues to increase as long as the black flag flying and recruits are flocking to it. Right now, ISIS is the strong horse. Now, President Obama is at least going over to the Pentagon for a briefing today. I'm hoping someone there can convince him that it's worth the while to actually cut our troops loose, arm the Kurds, arm the Sunni tribes who helped us take out al-Qaeda in Iraq, and really try to win this. I'm not hopeful, but I know they'll be making that case. A lot of people worried, though, about us uh, you know, picking sides in the sectarian violence, of course. You know, if we say arm the Sunnis, then that's it. We're in hook, line, and sinkers. And some of them really aren't our friends either, to be quite frank. Oh, not at all. And it's a question of picking the least bad people to back against the most bad. And ISIS is most definitely the most bad. And the problem now is because we abdicated our position as ally to the Iraqi government, the Iranians are moving in. And the worst possible scenario would be the Iranians ranging throughout the Sunni areas of Anbar province. And that would be the sectarian violence that could set off a hot war in the region. When you talk about U.S. troops, uh, we had an additional 400-some-odd troops, uh, or whatever they label them. What mm -hmm. do you think is politically palatable for President Obama? Uh, how far would he go? Because we know he won't go full-blown, you know, a lot of troops on the ground. And would it work? Could he find some sort of ground there, some sort of center common ground there that would actually be effective? I think if he changed the rules of engagement and allowed the troops we have there to go ahead and actually accompany the Iraqis on combat missions, to call for fire, to do the things they're trained to do, and to help the Iraqis with some leadership, that would help. And then also, as I said, arming the Kurds and Sunnis gives a big force multiplier because the Iraqi government, majority Shia, does not want those folks to have weapons. Right. They want to kill ISIS too, and the Kurdish Peshmerga are killing them by the dozens. They could use our help. I got to tell you, what, what the, uh, the Kurds did in, in Kobani, it might be all rubble, but the victory they had over ISIS there and they continue to fight for every day is so inspiring. I agree with you. I hope we help them out because they are amazing, and I think they'll be a great help to us. Jim, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Oh, pleasure, Charles.